The following presentation covers a period of biblical world history spanning almost 3,500 years in just six minutes. It is our prayer that this overview will assist you in your understanding of biblical history as well as your understanding of current geopolitical circumstances, especially where the nation of Israel is concerned. It should also give you a distinct feel for where we are in current prophetic and biblical times. The story of Israel begins with the life of Abraham. Abraham was a direct descendant of and the five times great grandson of Noah. Abraham came from Ur of the Chaldees, the modern day nation of Iraq. His father was a worshiper of many pagan gods. Abraham worshiped the one true God, Yahweh, the God of Noah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Because of his faithfulness, God made Abraham a promise. He promised him a certain area of the world in which his seed would become a mighty nation. He promised him that out of this nation, the whole world would be blessed. Abraham settled in this new promised land. His grandson, Jacob, had 12 sons. Because one of his sons, Joseph, had become an important official in Egypt, Jacob and his sons and their family settled in Egypt during a time of severe famine. Under Joseph's management, Egypt was prepared for the famine and had plenty. Jacob, whose name would be changed to Israel by God himself, his sons and his families lived in Egypt in peace and prosperity. But many generations later, spanning a period of some 400 years, the descendants, or the children of Israel, were now living as slaves in the land. They were despised by the Pharaohs and the Egyptians. God raised up a deliverer, however, by the name of Moses to bring out of Egypt the children of Israel and to take them back to the Promised Land and settle them there. After 40 years of preparation, the giving of the law and the Ten Commandments, a system of sacrifice and worship, and a system of societal laws, the children of Israel were now ready to enter God's land of promise. They settled the land according to their 12 tribes or family groups originating from Jacob and his 12 sons. A new nation of over 1 million people was now born. The nation thrived and expanded under a system of judges for several hundred years. In about 1020 BC, Israel had their first king, Saul. Their second king, David, began ruling in 1004 B.C. David established Jerusalem as the center of Israel, the capital and the center of Israel's worship of God. David's son, Solomon, was the next king. He further increased their power, wealth, and prosperity, and he built the first permanent temple and expanded trade with the nations around him. After Solomon, the nation went through a civil war. It was fought between the north and the south. The nation wound up divided. The northern kingdom was called Israel with its capital at Samaria and the southern kingdom was called Judah, with its capital at Jerusalem. Over the hundreds of years that followed, the northern kingdom was attacked, defeated, and carried off into captivity by the Assyrian Empire. Ten tribes were now gone from the land. The Babylonian Empire eventually captured and carried off the remaining two tribes of the southern kingdom. The temple was destroyed and the city walls and gates were torn down. This happened in 586 B.C. The Persian Empire, which eventually defeated the Babylonians, allowed some of the Jews to return to their homeland and rebuild their temple, their city walls, and gates. They were still subject to the Persians, however, and were not an independent nation. All the while, there were strange and hopeful prophecies that one day Israel would return to the land in her full glory and power and would continue in that glory until the Messiah himself established his throne in Jerusalem. After the Greeks defeated the Persians, the Jews eventually rebelled against their new captors in 166 B.C. and eventually retook and reclaimed Jerusalem, the temple, and some of the surrounding area in 164 B.C. They were still not an independent and secure nation, though. It seemed the prophecies of a returned Israel would never be fulfilled. In 63 B.C., the Romans conquered the area, and once again, Israel was under complete domination of another foreign power. It was into this world and time frame that Jesus the Christ entered. In 70 AD, the Romans expelled the Jews from the area of Jerusalem and the surrounding territory. Rome destroyed the rebuilt temple, and then in 135 AD, Rome named the land Palestine, meaning in Latin, the land of the Philistines. They did this to defile the land in the mind of the Jews so that they would not be inclined to return. 600,000 Jews lost their lives in the resulting persecution and extermination attempt. In the hundreds of years that followed, the dispersed Jews desperately desired to return to their homeland. Many attempts were made and failed. World War I further divided the land and confused the problem. In 1917, British Foreign Minister Balfour pledged support for establishment of a Jewish national home in Palestine. It did not happen yet. World War II again further complicated the matter, and Hitler devised his final solution 
to the Jewish problem. At the end of World War II, the nations who controlled the area of Roman Palestine decided to settle the matter once and for all. Under a United Nations resolution, a certain portion of Palestine or ancient Judea was given to the Jews and the other portions were given to the Arab occupants and settlers. Israel accepted. The Arabs did not. On May 14, 1948, Israel declared independence. The next day, five surrounding Arab nations attacked the new nation. Within months, Israel was victorious, and the nation of Israel was now firmly entrenched and established. The 2,000-year-old prophecy seemed to have now been fulfilled. Since that time, Israel has been attacked time and time again, but she has been victorious every time. To this day, Israel is maligned by most of the world. They are considered interlopers and occupiers. The Arabs and the other nomadic settlers call themselves refugees from the land of Palestine. But the fact is this, no nation has ever occupied that land as a nation with borders and capitals, international trade agreements, a standing national military, a king and a government except Israel. No nation. And that national history of Israel extends back over 3,000 years. This is the earth. This is the promised land. This is Israel. This is the prophecy. This is the fulfillment. This now is God's countdown clock for the last days.